Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So glad to have you here like always. Today's video was supposed to be a day-by-day -day growth or day-by-day -day development of some beautiful diamond fire tails in the nest. Now, unfortunately, this video did not work out as planned and halfway through, I had to stop and completely change the concept of the video because of a mistake that I made. And we'll get into that a little bit further on in the video and I'll explain to you guys one of the biggest problems that I had here in this aviary and it was a mistake that unfortunately I learned a lot from and hopefully it will help you guys learn from it as well because let's face it I love to share the positive things that I do in the aviary with you guys to help you guys learn and grow as you mature in this hobby and continue to go forward with it but the majority of the things that I've learned over the years have been because of mistakes that I've made and this was definitely a huge mistake. Hopefully it won't happen again. I've learned a lot from it, but it is something that you will want to learn from. But one of the things about these diamond fire tails is that they're a gift. I got these from a good friend of mine and he called me up about a week or two and uh, let me know that he had a couple of eggs that were abandoned by the parents. If I had a couple of societies, he would give me those eggs and I would be able to hatch them. So I couldn't say no. I grabbed two society pairs, got them ready, and I placed these eggs underneath that pair and decided to do a day by day because I hadn't done that before with the diamond fire tails and it'd be a great way to share with you guys the different developing stages of these birds so you kind of get an idea of how they develop throughout that time when they first hatch until the day that they fledge. Now the problem that I ended up having was that it is already the end of my breeding season. I've completely stopped and I've separated all of the birds, including some of the society pairs that I had. So when he called me last minute, I had to put two pairs of societies together for the eggs that he was bringing. Now during this time, I had been treating the birds. This is something that I normally do at the end of my breeding season. After I separate everybody, I give everybody a variety of different medications to make sure or to get them prepared for the molting and to get them prepared for the resting stage before they go again and get ready to breed the following year. And one of the medications that I was giving during this time was a mixture of Ronix and Tritamine Sulfa. And the reason why I was given this medication was because usually at the end of my breeding season, I like to treat with Ronix or Ronidasole because of the protozoal infection. This is something that flares up when the birds are stressed out. Now I was giving the Ronix a bit high and I didn't realize exactly how extensive the damage could be from mixing these two medications together at a very higher dosage. And one of the problems that I did have was not because of the medication, but it was a problem on my part because unfortunately, I didn't mix the medications correctly. When I was grabbing the scoops, I may have mixed up and added more medication than needed. And what happened was that this caused the water to be bitter so the birds stopped drinking the water and stopped feeding the chicks. See, when you only add one medication to the water, for example, I like to prepare one gallon when I do these medications because I have a lot of birds that I have to give it to. Normally, if you just do one of the two medications, whether it's the tritamine sulfa or the Ronida Sole into one gallon, just one of those, then you have no problem because the water is not as bitter. But when you combine both of the medications into one gallon of water, the water becomes a bit more bitter and the birds tend to drink less. So it is very important during these times that you give this medication, if you do decide to combine them, that you keep an eye on the birds to make sure that they're staying hydrated. Unfortunately, since I always give this while the birds are not breeding, I didn't think much of it and unfortunately the society stopped feeding these chicks and I had to go ahead and take over. And as many of you know, hand feeding baby birds is not an easy task. It is something that takes a lot of your time, it takes a lot of dedication, a lot of patience, but I don't regret it. I love doing this so I'm just glad to be able to help them out. Unfortunately, I couldn't just sit back and watch them die underneath the societies because quite frankly they just completely stopped feeding. As you saw during the section while they were in the nest showing you the day-by-day -day growth of them, there was times where you would look at their crop and you could see that they had hand feeding formula in there. And I noticed that very early on. I noticed that they just weren't feeding enough. So I had to start intervening and giving them the uh, hand feeding formula just to help them out. And I thought that eventually, after a while of changing out the water, because once I did catch on to this, I took away the medication 
and I started to give the societies just regular water. But unfortunately, something must have happened where they just decided that they weren't going to continue feeding because of the whole problem that they had, whether it's because during that time they were too dehydrated, whether it's because they just didn't like that medication or whatever the case may be. So keep that in mind. Anytime that you do decide to give medications to your birds while they're breeding, keep a very close eye on them to make sure that they continue to feed the chicks. Make sure that you don't over medicate and give too much and also make sure that the medications that you're giving are bird safe or not just bird safe but chick safe that they're not harmful to very young chicks for example ronida sole is a very safe medication that can be giving to baby birds that are in the nest and so is tritamin sulfa it is a very safe medication that can be given to baby birds that are in the nest so i wasn't afraid of the medication hurting the chicks and as you can see the chicks are perfectly healthy and they were never harmed by this medication the only problem that I did have was that unfortunately the societies didn't like the taste of the water and they just completely stopped drinking water and once they did that that meant that they stopped feeding the chicks so this is a learning experience hopefully this video helps you guys out so you don't make this same mistake if you are in your breeding season right now and you for some reason do have to medicate make sure to be very careful how much medication you give them and what mixes you do so that this doesn't end up happening to you all right guys well this is going to be the end of another video i really hope that you guys have enjoyed it like always if you did remember to hit the like button consider subscribing if you haven't done so already i hope that you all have a wonderful day we will see each other in the next video